Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. And if you've never been here before, then hello, my name is Grace. On this channel, we generally talk about how to live your most intentional and happy life. I just wanted to come on here and kind of give you guys a bit of a minimalism update and a life update and a get to know me for anyone that's new to the channel or just wants to get to know me a little bit better. In the spirit of realistic life, I'm just sitting down after a nice shower. I have like a meadow song stuff playing on my TV right now and I'm feeling very calm. Let's get into the video. First, I'm gonna start off with a minimalism update. So I've pretty much done a declutter in all of the areas of our apartment at this point and I feel quite good about where I'm at. So that's really nice. I definitely have completely gotten the itch of decluttering and I just want to get rid of more and more. So like we've already done, I've probably done two or three sweeps of my wardrobe and I would like to do probably like one more and I also need to go through my closet again because somehow it always just fills up with stuff that I need to organize or put away or declutter. I feel like essentially I'm at the place where I am almost happy with all of the stuff that we have and I'm feeling like I'm nearing the end of my like initial decluttering journey and obviously there's only like so much that I can do because like I've mentioned in every single one of my decluttering videos, I don't own everything in this apartment, so I can't declutter everything. So I think I'm hitting the wall of like things that I can feasibly declutter. So the second that I'm done with that, I'm planning on organizing everything. So making sure that everything in my apartment has a home so that things don't get messy so fast. And I'm thinking of potentially doing a no buy challenge. Maybe I'll try to do it during the summer because like sundresses are my weakness and <laughs> I need to like put a kibosh on my spending. I'm still a recovering shopaholic and I have felt the urges to purchase things and shop come on quite strong in the past like few weeks. I don't know why, probably because I've started decluttering quite a bit of my stuff. So I'm like, oh, well now that the house is a little emptier like it's time to buy more things and now I'll just buy a certain few things and I have bought a couple of things one of them being like a blanket for the couch because right now we're using this comforter that belongs on a different bed in the apartment so I was like okay we can get a blanket for the couch so it's a specifically couch blanket that's like realistic and fine but I'm like starting to want to buy other things I don't know I can notice my thinking start to get like oh now that i've gotten rid of all these clothes like there's just one more thing that i really want to get like this one dress it's like no you don't need that you don't need that focus on the stuff that will actually bring you joy don't focus on the material things that you think you need so i definitely have that going on right now and i feel like People don't talk about that enough in terms of minimalism. When you are going minimalist, it's not like the urge to buy things just magically goes away. I've been struggling with it this whole time because it's kind of like breaking an addiction because our society, the way that it's set up, is set up so that you want to buy things all the time to like ease your problems and make your life better and blah 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 and like i've been trying not to fall into those traps since i've gone minimalist but i've definitely noticed myself wanting to go out and purchase more things and that's just how i'm feeling and i just wanted to update you guys and let you guys know that that's happening and that's the realistic life of someone starting out on a minimalism journey i think 
generally it's hard finding a balance especially when you first become a minimalist because you feel like all purchases are bad but realistically there are certain things that you do need to buy like if something is broken and you can't realistically fix it you can go buy a new thing if you need it and use it buy like something that's really good quality so it'll last you i am a little tight on cash at the moment and i have like two things that are kind of broken do I need to buy new versions of them? Not really, they still work. I think I'm just gonna use them until they're totally broken. And I just keep thinking ahead to the fact that Ray and I are gonna move out of this country in four or five years and none of the electrical stuff is the same over there. So why would I waste my money on something here when I know that I'm not gonna be able to bring it over there? That's just the way my brain is personally working at the moment. So that's just like a brain dump of where I'm at in terms of my minimalism. Essentially, to wrap up this section, I am just at the phase where I'm rationalizing buying things when realistically, I don't need to buy them. In terms of life updates, there's a few big ones. So as some of you may know, I started a holistic healing journey for my eczema at the beginning of this year and that kind of translated into at the beginning of February me completely changing my diet. So I believe that the root cause of my eczema is related to an overgrowth of candida potentially or yeast in my gut. So I essentially went on a candida cleanse diet for about two weeks and then since then have just been on an elimination diet while I'm figuring out what specifically triggers my eczema. So it seems as though soy is one of the biggest triggers for my eczema. And as someone who was vegan for five years prior to this, soy is like my main source of protein, or it was. So essentially for my own health, and the health of my skin and my body. I have had to do a lot of <laughs> introspecting, reflecting, and accepting the fact that what is best for my body and my health is to go back to being pescatarian. So that has been a tough pill for me to swallow, not gonna lie. I'm always of the thought process that you know, eating mostly like veggies and stuff is the best way to go health-wise. And I think everyone should cut down on their meat intake. I was never a vegan that was like, you're a bad person for eating meat because everyone's body is different. And But like being honest, it was hard accepting the fact that I would have to start eating fish again and eggs. So that's been a bit of an adjustment. So yeah. I'm pescatarian, but I'm literally just eating salmon, and then if something has fish oil in it, then I'll eat it as well. So yeah, that's pretty major. I'm essentially just on a Mediterranean diet right now, because as you know, if you had watched a couple videos back, I'm not eating soy, I'm not eating gluten, dairy, and sugar. So it's been really tough, but you know, my skin looks amazing now, so yeah. Chances are, moving forward, I'm just gonna have a very, very low sugar and low gluten diet, but I will likely remain dairy-free and soy-free for the rest of my life because those ones seem to be the worst for my skin. In terms of how it's been mentally, it's been exhausting and very, very, very overwhelming. The first two weeks that I was doing the Candida cleanse, which is basically just leafy vegetables, and brassicas and like quinoa, I was very upset, crying almost every day, <laughs> and I had to eat fish again, so that was really overwhelming. It was definitely also a bit of a budget adjustment because, you know, vegetables and groceries are quite expensive at the moment, but I think it's been worth it, and in terms of like how minimalism has fit into this, it has been really, helpful because it has been good at helping me let go of okay this is just your life now you can't 
subscribe to this imaginary version of yourself as much as you want to be a vegan you can't for your own health and you need to accept that in order to fuel your body properly you need to give this up and it's gonna be okay instead of spending money on useless like material items I'm just spending money on fueling my body with good food in terms of other updates um flip is doing really well he is healed from all of his ailments he's put on a little bit of weight um if you want to see a bit more of an in-depth video of like his whole story i would love to post one so let me know in the comments if you're interested in that i did post like an adoption vlog getting him but it's kind of like chaotic and scattered so if you want like a more sit down in-depth story of his like situation from then till now then um yeah just let me know in terms of our other little guy benjamin is doing really well too he's been brewmating mostly this past couple of months because it's been winter um and he just comes out for food every once in a while so essentially he's just chilling cute as ever so now that all the life updates are out of the way, this is the get to know me portion of the video. For all you people that are new here or whatever, here's a few things about me and my life just so you can know me a little bit better. I was raised in Cupertino, California, so the heart of Silicon Valley, right where Apple headquarters is. I moved to New York in 2017 for college where I studied theater and philosophy, but I'm not going out and auditioning for anything at the moment because it just doesn't really feel like what I want to do at the moment. This is just gonna sound kind of silly to some people, but currently and honestly since I was 10 years old, and I mentioned this a few videos ago, my biggest dream has been and always will be to own a tiny piece of land where I can have a garden and grow my own food and flowers and raise chickens and sheep and have dogs. That's just all I've ever wanted to do since I was like 10 years old. People at my school used to call me Farmer Grace. Like it's just, it's, it's an intrinsic part of who I am. And yes, I know you're probably thinking, oh, you wanna live on a farm? Why do you live in New York? Because I just do. I live in New York right now, and in four or five years, my boyfriend and I will be moving to New Zealand and building a house and doing all that farm stuff. I have no idea how we're gonna pay for it right now, but we'll figure that out. That's why I work three jobs. <laughs> If you want a few little cute fun facts about me, um, I love dogs. I just love dogs. When I was little, I used to bring a dog encyclopedia to school every day and learn all the different breeds of dogs. <laughs> Um, another thing about me is that I make pottery, so that's kind of a newer hobby that I've taken up in this past year and I've really been enjoying it. I'll probably end up doing a whole video about that sometime soon, but we'll see, I don't know. In terms of like health stuff, I have had chronic eczema my entire life. That has been diagnosed since I was very, very young. And also in the past year, I was diagnosed with inattentive ADHD. And another fun fact about me, which is a little bit of a plug as well, is that I'm starting an emailing list, finally. I've been thinking about doing this since honestly, I started this YouTube channel last January and I've just never been able to make it happen. I didn't really know what I was going to write about, like what to do. And ever since the beginning of this year, my best friend and I have been doing accountability meetings and it has honestly changed this year for me in such a major way. So I kind of wanted to be able to do that for all of you in case you didn't have anyone in your life that you felt comfortable asking to be your accountability partner for kind of just like making your goals happen, setting up habits and systems to kind of like work on stuff. And yeah, I don't know. Basically, I'm just gonna be recapping on like how my month went, the kind of things that I wanna focus on for the next month, what I could have done better last month that I will try to do better in the next month, things that make me happy, the things that I enjoyed, like little wins about the past month as well. And I'll also be sharing some like themed reflections and journal entries and stuff if you're interested in doing that as well. So it'll literally just come out on the first of every month. And yeah, 
it's kind of just a way to check in with yourself and see where you are on your kind of like healing journey because you know we're all on a healing journey of our own and I'm currently on one like many of you and I feel like it's good to have like a place where you can lean on and feel support from in terms of getting your habits and systems together and that's kind of the whole point of why I created this channel was to build a kind of community for people to feel inspired to make their lives something that didn't feel stressful or bad because I've been in a lot of different situations in my life where I just wished that things would change. There was probably a lot of different ways that I could have coped better with those situations or gotten myself out of them or dealt with them better in certain ways. So uh, yeah, that's basically it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too long. If you're still watching, I'm shocked. Honestly, um, <laughs> that's pretty much it. So I guess I'll see you in the next one. One. Until then, I am sending you all my love. <laughs>